This is a sports catastrophe production. Hey there, Heather Ho, there's Jeff Cutter down and welcome you to another sports catastrophe birthday boy. And the birthday boy for today, September 15th, is a coach, a former NFL coach who actually was a bust in a sense before going to USC to coach college football and then becoming a massive success, which led him to his job with the Seattle Seahawks. I know you, you know what I'm, who I'm talking about, but this guy freaking was once called one of the biggest busts in coaching by the NFL Network in their top 10. But yet, he came back and helped carry Seattle to a couple of Super Bowl appearances. So he's 73 years old today. His name is Pete Carroll. So Pete Carroll was born in San Francisco and attended Redwood High School. He was a multi-sport star in football, basketball, and baseball and was the school's athlete of the year in 1969. He would go to JUCO, or junior college, at the College of Marin and then transfer to the University of Pacific, playing free safety for that team and getting his Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. He actually tried out for the Honolulu Hawaiians of the World Football League, the much short-lived World Football League, like the Hawaiians team. But because of his shoulder problems and small size, well, he is, um, well, they're not telling me his size, but anyway, yeah, he was undersized. However, the Pacific head coach liked Carroll's energetic and positive personality, made him a graduate assistant at Pacific, and he did. He got a secretary teaching credential and a master's degree in physical education in 1976 and was a graduate assistant for three years working with the wide receivers and defenders. So, anyway, he was inducted to the Pacific University Hall of Fame in 1995. Carroll was a graduate assistant working for the secondary of the University of Arkansas in 1977 under Bob Cope, who was the secondary, the defensive coordinator. He did quite well in all that. He actually met Houston Nutt, who was the Razorbacks' backup quarterback for the 77 season, which then later on he would be the head coach. And an Arkansas defensive coordinator at the time, Monty Kiffin, who passed away recently, would be a mentor to Carroll. And with Carroll, the Razorbacks won the 1978 Orange Bowl, shocking Oklahoma, despite the fact that three of their best players were either suspended over a dorm incident, or basically protested by not playing. But Arkansas still won and ruined Oklahoma's chances to win the national title. Anyway, he moved to Iowa State to be an assistant, then Ohio State to coach the secondary, helping them get to the 1980 Rose Bowl, losing the SC. Anyway, Monty Kiffin was head coach of NC State, so Pete Carroll was made the defensive coordinator and secondary coach. And then he became the defensive backs coach for Buffalo in 1984, becoming the, that position with the Vikings from 85 to 89. And he was a candidate to go to Stanford and be the head coach. But Dennis Green got it, even though Dennis Green coached Northwestern, which were losers in the 1980s. However, the Jets decided to make Pete Carroll their defensive coordinator under Bruce Coslett. He almost was the Vikings head coach, but once again, Dennis Green beat him to that role. In 94, he was elevated to head coach of the Jets. And he was enthusiastic and all that. Carroll helped the Jets go 6-5 and five and were challenging for first in the East. However, the clock play by Dan Marino, which he faked the spike and threw it to, I think it was, I was uh, to Clayton for the touchdown, helped the Dolphins win the game. The Jets would finish 6-10 and 10 and was fired for Richie Kotite. Man, that was a giant mistake because of Kotite's shittiness. Regardless of that, San Fran did hire him to become the defensive coordinator for a few seasons. And then the Pats came knocking as Bill Parcells had resigned from the Pats. So he was made head coach and helped the 97 Pats win the AFC East. Unfortunately, though, they missed a few bad games. Uh, Mullins and they got and he got fired before the year two thousand. So he was thirty three and thirty one, and all that as a head coach. Some say he really was bad, 
But USC gave him a chance. Gave him the job to be the Trojans head coach in December 2000. Because they had to find a coach to replace Paul Hackett. So, anyway. USC would try to hire Dennis Erickson, who went to who was Oregon State's head coach, but he signed an extension with the Beavers. Then Oregon's coach, but he signed an extension. Then went to Mike Riley, who was the Chargers head coach. But because he was stuck in contractual obligations to the Chargers, he couldn't do it. So Pete Carroll was the school's fourth choice. Kind of pathetic that, you know, Pete Carroll was like fourth in line. However, it could have been worse. So anyway. It was huge and all of that. But within a year, many people would be reversing their course on criticizing Pete Carroll. And USC shocked a lot of people. Carroll's first USA team opened the 2001 season 2-5, and five, and a lot of people were writing off the Trojans. However, in the next 74 games, including bowl games, Pete Carroll won 67 of them. So practically, that made everyone shut the fuck up, winning two national championships and playing for another. Pete Carroll was good at being a recruiter and all that, and being part of the 34-game winning streak from 2003 to 2005, which was huge because they helped USC win a couple of national titles and almost three-peat, but Texas beat them in the 2006 Rose Bowl in one of the greatest games, if not the greatest game of all time. Well... Greatest bowl game of all time. I think it is. Unfortunately, though, 14 games were vacated for breaking NCAA rules. But still, the streak is technically uh, talked about. Regardless of that, USC would break a lot of things. Their average home attendance record four times in a row. The USC home attendance at Ellie Memorial Coliseum each season. In 2001, his first season was 57,000. By 2006, 91,000 fans would be watching USC games every game or all that. USC would actually have a 35-game winning streak at the Coliseum being snapped by that famous loss to Stanford as USC was the number one team and a 41-point favorite over Stanford and that Cardinal team, yes, the team that had Richard Sherman as a wide receiver, mind you, was that guy and all that. But yeah, it was huge and all that about Pete Carroll. Lots of teams wanted him to be head coach in the NFL and all that. But in 2010, he finally left to coach the Seattle Seahawks, signing a five-year deal. So he was in college for the 2000s, and he accomplished a lot. Two BCS game, championship game appearances, 2005 against Oklahoma, winning in 2006, lost to Texas. But still, there were, he was the 2004 national champion for the AP. And 2003, sorry. Seven consecutive top four finishes in the AP poll, six BCS bowl victories, seven consecutive BCS bowl appearances, 33 consecutive weeks as the AP's number one ranked team, an 83% winning percentage, 14 and 2 against Notre Dame and UCLA, scoring 20 plus points, a NCAA record, 63 straight games, 25 first team of all Americans, 53 players in the NFL draft, including 14 first rounders. Carroll also holds. Coaching three Heisman Trophy winners, Carson Palmer, Matt Leinart, and Reggie Bush. 34-game winning streak and November being almost unbeaten. Unfortunately, the NCAA sanctions would ruin a lot of things, especially with the whole Reggie Bush situation. But Reggie Bush was this year given his Heisman back. So he went to Seattle for the 2010 season. And they went 7-9. and nine. Normally, it'd be like, oh, crap, first year problems. But the worst part about this was that Pete Carroll and those Seahawks won their division. That's right. Every team in the NFC West, Rams, Seahawks, Niners, and Cardinals were below 500. And the Seahawks, based on head-to-head -head with the Rams, were 7-9 and nine and won the division title. Which meant they got to host a, a wildcard game against the defending Super Bowl champion New Orleans Saints. I, for one, wanted the Saints to win. Thinking that the Seahawks were below 500 and were lucky to get in. However, Carroll made me a liar as the Saints lost 41 36. That was the famous Beast Quake run by Marshawn Lynch, which shook Seattle Stadium so much that they, they were registering it as a, as a tremor. 
However, though, the Bears would beat the Seahawks to move on to the a NFC title game. 2011, again, they were 7-9. and nine. But this time, they couldn't win the division as the Niners won 13 games. In fact, it was the first time in a decade that the Seahawks had to a starting quarterback other than Matt Hasselbeck, as Russell Wilson would be there. Anyway, the Seahawks were 11-5 and five in the 2012 season, his third season. That was, of course, the, the season that saw Seattle beat Green Bay in what they called the Fail Mary, in which both the Green Bay defender and the Seattle receiver caught the ball at the same time, but they gave it to Seattle. That was when the NFL had replacement officials, and that's the catalyst for why the officials got their deal and all that. Regardless of that, Seattle won the wildcard game in Washington to beat RG3 and then lost narrowly at the Georgia Dome in the division round to the Falcons. However, his fourth season was huge. The Seahawks were 11-1 at one point, the top team in the NFC. Nevertheless, they split their last four, four games and went 13-3. and three. They were the top team in the NFC. So it was huge. The Seahawks would host the Saints again in, in, a, in a matchup in, at the stadium, this time in the division round in 123-15. And then Richard Sherman made a fantastic tip of a pass. As Kaepernick was trying to get to Michael Crabtree with a pass at the last moments of the NFC title game between the Niners and the Seahawks, but Richard Sherman tipped it into the waiting arms of Malcolm Smith. It was called the tip, and then that's when Richard Sherman basically blasted Michael Crabtree in the interview with Aaron Andrews. Seahawks would face the Broncos with Peyton Manning and made Peyton Manning look like a fool, getting a safety on the first play of the game, and their defense just putting it. The Legion of Boom did their job, taking the Broncos at 43-8, to a 35-point win, which I think only three times has been done in the Super Bowl ever. Yeah, it was fun watching it. I actually watched that game on my break at Target. Like the butt end of the second quarter and then the start of the third quarter. And huge. I wanted Seattle to win. I didn't want Penny Manning to win a Super Bowl. Regardless of that, Pete Carroll became the third head coach ever to win an NCAA title and a Super Bowl, joining Barry Switzer and Jimmy Johnson. Carroll at 62 would be the third oldest coach to win a Super Bowl, as Tom Coughlin was 65, which is the Canadian retirement age, when the Giants won Super Bowl 46, and Dick Vermeule was 63 when the Rams won Super Bowl 34. In 2014, the Seahawks wanted to repeat, and they were the NFC champions. They took care of Carolina in the divisional round, and then in that famous NFC championship comeback against the Packers, they were down 19-7 and looked bleak, but then a fake field goal touchdown and a few things helped Seattle beat Green Bay and all that. The Seahawks were going for broke. They were going to go back-to-back -back championships. They had that famous catch by Jermaine Curse that basically the ball was in the air, and somehow, in some way, he managed to catch that ball about the 15-yard line. Seattle got down to the one, and it looked like an easy run by either Russell or Marshawn Lynch. Unfortunately, though, they decided to go for a pass, I think trying to fool the Patriots, but it did not work as Malcolm Butler made the stand at the goal line and a lot of people called Carroll's play call the worst play call in NFL history. I say so, too. And this is coming from a Patriots fan, too. Regardless of that, Seattle ended up winning a trip to the postseason for 2015, winning the wild card against Minnesota in Minnesota because Blair Walsh bobbled a 27-yard field goal in the cold. Remember, Minnesota was playing at the University of Minnesota Stadium, which was open air, and Walsh missed it. I actually thought Seattle would beat Minnesota, and I was shocked when Seattle did so under those circumstances. Seahawks were down 31 0 in the division round to the powerful Carolina Panthers, who were 15 and 1. They came back. They actually scored 24 straight points, but lost by a touchdown. But hey, you know what? It gave Carolina a spook. For the 2016 season, they got to the playoffs. In the wild card, they hosted Detroit and crushed them 26 to 6. 10 straight home playoff wins. And then they would go to, to Atlanta and be beaten by the Falcons, who went on to the NFC title game. I mean, to be the NFC's representative of the Super Bowl. And we all know what happens in 28-3. I mean, it may say more. 
Unfortunately, though, in 2017, the Seahawks finally missed the playoffs. And then in 2018, they went to the playoffs, lost the wild card to Dallas by a few points. However, Carroll in that season would overcome Mike Holmgren as the most wins by a Seahawks head coach. 2019, he helped the Seahawks win 11 games and being the five seed and shocked Philly in the wild card round in Philly before the Packers beat them 28-23 in the divisional round. He helped the Seahawks in the COVID-riddled season of 2020 win 12 games and win the divisional round, but somehow lose to the Rams in the wild card round, which was pathetic. In 2021, the Seahawks were not doing that well. It was their first losing season in 10 years. Seattle in the 2022 season had a massive fall down. Russell Wilson was traded to the Broncos. Geo Smith was made the starter and all that. Ironically enough, on Monday Night Football, the Seahawks would face the Broncos. And Seahawks won by a point. Seattle was 9-8, got to the wild card round, but lost to the Niners quite handily. Seattle was 9-8 and eight and actually had a playoff spot right in their grasp. But Green Bay on the final day, the final game against the Bears, won the game and had the playoff tie break. So Seattle would miss the playoffs. Carroll and the Seahawks would mutually agree January 10th of this year, 2024, to step down from his head coaching role which was huge and all that. So Pete Carroll did fantastic. In his 14 seasons with the Seahawks, he won 137 regular season games and 10 postseason games, including winning the Super Bowl in 2014 and coming oh so close in 2015. But Marshawn Lynch ran the ball. And this is coming from a Pats fan, like I said. For USC, he was 97 and 19 overall, winning Manny Rose Bowls winning seven bowl games, including the Emerald Bowl, which was his last game for USC, getting a pair of national championships and practically making USC viable once again. So Pete Carroll is just that damn good. And, you know, he retired on top in a sense and can't say anything bad. From bust to best, that's all I got to say. Anyway, I'm Jeff Diamond Duke.